Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. I'm Jack Hatfield. I hope you enjoy our show. Our selection today is the play Mother Courage and Her Children by Bertolt Brecht. It is considered by some to be the greatest play of the 20th century and perhaps the greatest anti-war play. Written in 1939 at the start of World War II, takes place in the 30 years world war in the early 17th century and started as a religious war between Protestants and Catholics in Sweden and Germany. And it follows the fortunes of Anna Fairling and she was nicknamed Mother Courage, who makes her family's living by buying and selling goods from her canteen wagon. The start of the play begins with Mother Courage and her daughter being pulled by her two sons, and the play ends with all three grown children dead and Mother Courage attempting to pull the cart by herself. So the question is, is Mother Courage courageous? Is she noble? Well, I first started thinking well, she wasn't any more courageous than any of the other peasants because war was coming to them and she was actually in the back of the war with an army between her and the enemy. So I thought, well, maybe she wasn't so courageous. And then I got to this part in the book where she actually says poor people need courage because they're lost, that they can get up in the morning is remarkable or plow a field in wartime or even bringing children into the world takes courage in their situation. And so then I changed my mind and I said, yes, she is courageous. She's just as courageous as the other But she's courageous doing peasants. ordinary things. Yes. She's mm -hmm. courageous to bring a child into the world. Yes. So she becomes more realistic than the people who fight their fate. Um, for example, there's a, uh, a soldier who wants to complain because uh, somebody took his reward. And she was thinking of complaining as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she said, you know, I'm not going to complain. And if, if you want to survive, you won't complain either. And then there's the song of uh, capitulation, capitulation. Uh, where you just accept fate. And so that's her courage, because the, uh, the world is unfair and hard, and there's always a war going on. And the only way to survive is to courageously accept. Does, does that mean everybody that does those things is courageous, having children? Some people don't. Uh, but don't. they have children. Everybody have a child well, is a courageous. Child, uh, I think so. The people, who, <laughs> <laughs> the, people who think twice, the people who think twice about bringing a child into the world don't have the courage to do it. I think that's the context of, mm. of that statement. So there are people who don't have the courage to uh, persevere in the, uh, the face of uh, uh, you know, things to thwart them. And that's her specialty. And yeah. is this called mother courage because he's saying that a lot of mothers have courage? Especially uh, with they that call, quote I they, just read. No, but they called her mother courage because she went after the army to sell them 50 loaves of bread that were moldy. Yeah. Yeah, she went through the battle. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, right. Section. That's not See, so they identified her as Mother Courage because of that. Six. But I don't think that was a courageous act. No. <laughs> I I uh, I think that uh, the peasants she they, that uh, there, there's a line here on, on chapter seven and uh, they're talking about the peasants that just kinda went back and this is too many this is the song, too many seek a bed to sleep in, each ditch is taken in each cave. And he who digs a hole to creep in finds he has dug an early grave. So, I mean, he, he's saying the peasants who just retire and go back and raise their crops and hide, that's not the answer either. I think she was courageous in that she was out in front in trying to keep her family together. And the last scene where she's pulling the cart Alone. by herself, yeah. that is yeah. just... Uh -huh. she's, and she's saying, I hope I can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But she worked just for her family. Right. She pulled yeah. that canteen and she was helping the Protestants. And then after she got captured by the Catholics for the next like three years or so, well, yeah. she pulled the canteen for the Catholics. Yeah, she but wasn't a spy. She wasn't working for her side. She was just working for herself survival. and her family. When you survival. say she was working yes. for her family, what did she do for her family? She what? kept them fed. She kept oh, her fed, oh, and, and oh. she did not give up her canteen to live with the 
with the, with the cook with the because cook. she wouldn't um, I mean, she wouldn't leave her daughter. Attention. Yeah, right. Okay. And she's desperately trying to keep her sons from being from being yeah, in the army. Right. She's right. That's what I thought. She yeah. and really focused on self-preservation is is more important than the common good apparently, because if uh, you are to enlist or be conscripted, that's okay for everybody else, sure. yeah. but not okay for me. Yeah, she said but that for her family. Yeah, big difference. That's yeah. right. And yeah. she's a little. I mean, she's she's very worldly wise. I mean, the the, the oldest oldest son buys the whole line that, oh, women will love you if you enlist, and here we'll give you this money, and he kind of buys into it. And she's, you know, she's very worldly wise. I mean, she's whatever the opposite of naive is is what Mother Courage is. I think. Can you think of any noble act that she did? Yes, yeah. quite a few. No, noble as opposed noble. to noble. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Let's hear it. For the common good or just for the good of her family? For I don't think the common good is even in this story. Uh, no, There's I don't no either. common good that she well, was can, noble for. Give, no. give us a noble Well, I think the, the last scene where she's trying to just pull the wagon by herself, just trying to go on with life. It's, oh, it's it's no she doesn't care about, about providing the stuff for the people. She just cares about the right. money. She was greedy. She, she really cares cared. about her family. Oh, I didn't right, but if she really all, cared about the gosh. common good, then she wouldn't worry about tearing up the shirts for bandages. You, that's right. true. Lisa didn't think she was greedy? I thought she was greedy for, to survive. That was. I don't think she was. I don't think she was like amassing. Well, she was. That's her motivation for being greedy. But well, greedy she was. I don't. Okay. I guess I define greedy different. See, to me, if someone like makes a huge profit off a war, which everybody, and someone always does. Look, look, look war, what right? she did with that capon. There was an event that happened. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. And you remember her negotiating? Uh, yeah. Yeah. She, sure. she started with like huh? 50, right. and, and then he said, I'll give you 30. Yeah, and and said, uh, over yeah. and over. And look what she did, negotiating while her son is being tried and gets executed because she negotiated too long. But I thought that, see, I thought... Uh, if that's uh, not yeah. greedy, I, really I don't think it's greedy. I think it was, again, it was survival. Yeah, she I knew that, that if she couldn't keep her cart, that they would all starve. They would all die because they would starve. Because yeah, she and originally said it was okay to give 200, 200 guilders or whatever it yeah. was. Florence. Um, Florence? I think that's, yeah. Okay, um, 200 because she was planning on getting hold of, of the, the cash the, box. The cash box. And once she found out that the cash box was in the river, right. she said, I have to keep some of this money to survive. Yeah. What are my daughter and I going to live on? I can't go up to 200 Florence anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to keep 80 back. Yeah. And that cost her her son's life. To, to, to me, that was like the in Sophie's Choice, the way the Nazis tell Sophie, yes. okay, you got two kids, you can only keep one of them. And she can't make the decision. So they both die. I mean, okay. how yeah. do you make a decision like, like that yes. of, you know, which of my kids am I going to save or am I going to save myself above my kids? I guess how I define courage is not battle, it's just um, people that get up in the morning. Get up and yeah. do what they had. Like, uh, yeah. my prime example is parents of handicapped kids. Or, or someone people. having to have two or three jobs or a single mother trying to keep a family yeah, together. Yeah, right, or being someone with a mental illness or someone that just has to get up every day and say, okay, I'm going to oh, say yes to another day. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to jump, I'm not going to put my head in the oven today. I'm going to, you know. One and she really, I mean, like that moved me terribly, like you said, Jack, when the, she's all alone, she's yeah. got she's got to carry, she's not a young woman by the no, end of the play. No. She's going to pull and, this damn shirt. And she's still you know? looking for her son, Ilif, who she was never told that he was killed. Yeah, right. So she's, she's hoping that he's kind up of there. Hope. Yeah, it wasn't it interesting kind of that yeah. Ilif uh, got rewarded for murdering people, uh, and then uh -huh. he gets executed for doing the same act uh -huh. that Absolutely. he did during the war versus people. To, I to thought that was a great mm. point about war, war. changing the rules it, 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 and well, turning people into big time. people that they wouldn't ordinarily be. Right. You know? yeah. Well, war, participating in the war itself was the alternative to her mode of survival. She could have become a partisan, um, uh, the, the Catholics or the Protestants, or uh, okayed her sons going into the service. Uh, and so, yeah, she was greedy for her own survival, but she could the have chosen to survival. kill people instead. Yeah. She what? Family, family survival. Family, family survival. survival. Okay. Yeah. Her and her family. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so that was her choice. Her choice was: should I uh, survive and get my family to survive, or should I become a part of the larger scene that uh, becomes a soldier? How would she have made a living? How would she have made a living that way? The, the soldiers plundered. They, uh, but she wouldn't have been a soldier. Well, she's a, she's a lady. But she's a woman. She wouldn't be a soldier. The twist is that she didn't have to 
join the war so early. She went she after the war. She looked for it. She looked for the war. She was tired of waiting. She said it would take a My yeah. She was disappointed that the war was going to be over. Yeah. 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 My, my, my Every time is over. peace was yeah. breaking out, she was going, oh, my goodness. Yeah. You, you I see, see we have two different, very different views of her, I think. Mm -hmm. and that's, yes. Yeah. I think you think one, she's greedy. One is she's greedy and a war profiteer, and the other one said, is saying that they're, it's, it's very different, that she's very courageous, and I would say noble, and that she's doing anything she can to keep her family together. So that's, I think that's she, the two she, A human being can be both, right? I don't think so. No. But anyway, let me ask, one of the things in there is about uh, injustice, about how the whole morality goes by the wayside during war. And um, one thing that Mother Courage, she says, um, in just a one line, um, that uh, the, the soldier came in and he's going to go and complain to the to the uh, the commander about he, he was get his reward. he didn't get his reward yeah. and everything, and she says, "You're quite right, but for how long are you going to to keep going?" And, and he says, mm -hmm. "How long will, won't you stand for injustice? One hour or two? You haven't asked yourself that, have you?" And yet that's the main thing. And I was thinking. What he's trying to say, I think, is injustice, is how do you fight injustice for every man or every woman? And he's saying something that I don't quite understand, is if you just stand up for, for something once for a short period of time, it's not any good. That's what Mother Courage says. But if you do it for longer, it's, it's something very, very different. What uh, scene are we in? What, scene four? Scene four, yeah. Okay. Well, my translation says, um, my translation is, uh, she says, Mother Kirsch says to the, long soldier, to the young soldier, uh, you've been listening to me because you know it's like what I say. Your anger has gone up in smoke already. It was just a short anger. You need a long one. But where are you going to get it from? That's a little bit of tra different translation, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Are you trying to tell me asking for my reward is wrong? No, not a bit. I'm just telling you your anger ain't long enough. It's good for now. Pity. If you'd had a long one, I'd be trying to prod you, prod you on. Uh, Does she have a long one? Um, I think she's given up on the whole thing. She withdrew yeah. hers. Yeah. She right. was there to make a complaint, but talked him out of it, and then she said, I'm not going to do mine either. Right. But the yeah. reason she was going to make a complaint is because they destroyed her car, and she was afraid that if she didn't complain, she'd look guilty. They, she'd look guilty. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. remember, this is just after her, her son had been killed, and, and they thought that what she, side is what, she, yeah. that she was related to him. Well, she was harboring him. She denied him. that. It, yeah. Right. She that did, denied son, that she son. even knew him. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, that's that survival. There. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. she knew how right. to survive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she said, if I complain, that will help me survive. And then she thought mm -hmm. better of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought you know, she has, has two sons and a daughter. And I think each one of them had a, a different different uh, fate different fate but also a different personality that yes. and the the daughter uh, was compassionate yeah. and she kind of was a, a I thought a symbol for compassion and so she was the one that stood up for him and got shot so yeah. in part because she was trying to save the children in that right. village right and but yeah. also she's trying to save right. her mother yeah so, so, so if you say her life yeah. if you say mother curry should have stood up for her for justice at the very start and compassion and all that, I think Brecht is saying, well, that's not a good way either. I think you're, you're, you're screwed by, by yeah. circumstances. Right, you can do that, but you get killed, yeah. But, but that yeah. was she a was wonderful a part of, of the, the story when they have that song of the, the three great men. And, you know, one of them is says, Julius Caesar is brave. And, you know, he was killed. Look where that got him. And, you know, <laughs> man's better off without bravery. And uh -huh. I live was said to be brave, yeah. and Ilef was also compared to Caesar in one of the scenes. Mm -hmm. And then it says, honest Socrates, well, look, he was killed, look so a man's him. better off without mm -hmm. being honest, and her honest son, Swiss cheese, was a paymaster, and he was killed, and then unselfish uh -huh. Martin, just like her, his un yeah. her unselfish daughter. What did you right? think of uh, her, her oh. reaction exactly. to the general? Uh, when the general was praising her son, and then she went after the general because he wants courageous men, and you shouldn't have to be courageous yeah. if you're a soldier. If you're doing it right. If you're doing it right. Yeah. It, yeah. That was an interesting mm -hmm. twist, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I, like, uh, I like that. Yeah. I wish I could 
Wish I could find the yeah. quote. When leaders look for people who are courageous and walk. If, that, if, means that, they, that means they're bad generals. They're bad generals. Yeah, yeah. because know what it doing. should be mechanized to the point where anybody could do it. Do it, that, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you don't it's have to when they say, yeah, it's it. Scene two. Uh, okay. Whenever there are great virtues, it's a sure sign something's wrong. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if his plan of campaign was any good, why would you need brave soldiers? Wouldn't plain, ordinary soldiers do? <laughs> In a good country, virtues wouldn't be necessary. I thought that was good. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that this book was talking about mother courage in that she wanted to make money off of the war, and she wound up getting completely destroyed. Her family was completely de destroyed. And so the point is you shouldn't go into a war looking to get something out of it because it's not going to work. War will destroy you. But also that you can't put your faith in the leaders of the war because they don't know what they're doing. The generals don't know what they're doing. We're, we're back to this two ways that we're looking at Mother oh. Curry. <laughs> okay. And That's I think good. Lisa and I are more that, that it's, it's very different. That mm -hmm. she wasn't she wasn't a profiteer. What she was doing was trying to save her family. She wasn't anyway, a she profiteer? Could, she was trying to save her family. Well, but she, she was trying to make money off oh, But she was just making enough to save her family. She, she couldn't family. wait till the war heated up. But yeah. she was just, just enough to survive. It wasn't like she was amassing this great fortune. Right. She was just making enough to, and they had lean times. I mean, you saw that. She was just, just making enough to not be malnourished, but, I think. But she had a you know? choice whether she was there. You know, maybe it would have been hard to, to find some some other way to survive. Yeah. But she deliberately chose to keep following. If it was the up armies. to her, war would have been on forever. That's right. Well, well I, I think, think the point is I that it is on forever. Yeah, it is well, on forever. I think what it only lasted saying, 30 years. Yeah, right. But there's going to be another war. I think what Brecht is saying is that war is life. It's uh, it, how, how does one survive in life? Yeah. That there's always a war, there, um, there might be a few years of peace, uh, there might be uh, a period where uh, things seem idyllic, but it comes back and so people can't wait for war. And what is, what is the attitude that uh, one should cultivate toward life or toward war? Mm -hmm. And the song of capitulation, I think, is what's suggested is, uh, you know, resign yourself. Don't fight to, it. You don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't I, I don't know if that's Brecht's <laughs> preference, but that's suggested. Well, it, 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 isn't that her? Isn't that yeah. her courage? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. get buffeted by the waves and uh, you do what you can. roll and, with the tide. And when you have lemonade or whatever, you're making Yeah, make lemonade. Yeah. And, and she starts that song out saying, when I was young, I thought I was special, and I thought I was better, and then I realized that I'm not, that I'm going to... It well, was pretty sad, uh, My translation I thought, you know. is, is different from everybody else's. Yeah, here, but what, the, the, what section uh, are you in? Um, in sec scene four. Scene four, okay. Uh, this is the song of capitulation. Okay. And the, the chorus keeps recurring, and she goes marching with the show in step, however fast or slow, and rattles off her little song, It Won't Be Long. And then the whole thing slides. You think God provides, but you've got it wrong. Boy, this is a completely oh boy, different translation. Different yes. I, yeah, yeah. The chorus that I have is, uh, uh, then I heard that tit chirp, wait a bit, and you'll be marching with the band and step, responding to command and striking up your little dance. Now they advance and now parade form square. Then men swear God's there, not the faintest chance. Well, and, yeah. that's the same meaning, I think. I yeah. had a very interesting one in that it, it sounds a lot like yours, but it has different words. When she talks about when she was a beginner, she says, you will join the Big Brass Band. And then the next verse, she says, you have joined the Big Brass Band. Oh. And then it's, after she talks to the soldier, we will join the Big Brass Band. It does band. change yeah. like that so for mine. she mm -hmm. didn't want to get pulled into the destruction of war, yeah. but she was, and, and the we is everybody else that's going to be pulled into the destruction mm -hmm. of war. That's the way I read it. Can the I capitulation. There, there's another thing she says here. Not, I'm reading slightly out of order. She says there's not, she's called a, a, a hyena of the battlefield, right? The chaplain. Yes. And she says, um, there isn't much love lost between me and the war. And this is great. Remember what one fox said to another that was caught in a trap. If you stay there, just asking for trouble. In other words, you know, she's caught in a trap, mm -hmm. and she thought she was special, couldn't get out of it, and, and she couldn't. And, and people, you know, we're saying 
well, get out of it. Well, she can't. Mm -hmm. so, so. Did you read anything into the chaplain's comment to her about, I want to be closer to you? Well, sure. The, the chaplain wanted a relationship yeah. with her, yeah. but she did wanted he want a romantic relationship. Yes. I guess he did. Yes. Yeah, yes, very he, much so. But yeah. then he, he the yeah. chaplain and, and the cook both know they both hang around her because she feeds them, right? I mean, it's a secure, it's a more secure yeah. life. She's got right. the brandy, she's got the food, she's got the boots. So right. and they they're not exactly stupid I mean, about her. You know, yeah. they argue yeah. with each other. What, you know, what they you, know they're, what they both you, want her. The, the chaplain said something interesting. He was saying, "This was Katrine was cut up." And she, she was coming back from the marketplace and she got up and probably raped. I, that was kind of, yeah, I thought I it was wondered, important. Yeah, attacked and, by the soldiers. Yeah. yeah, and so he says, you don't really blame the attackers. That that's just a, a something, a, a, because they're in war, that's what they do. And but we made a, that point before, that war makes you a different yeah, person yeah. than you would have been. But, but that's way, carrying it a little too far, I think. Can, can you tell me what scene, that, scene eight? Um, that's yeah. They seemed to know that she was going to get hurt when she went out. Mm. Uh, well, she kept trying to make her ugly by putting ashes on yeah, her face right. and mm -hmm. keeping her away from the other men. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. sent someone with her as protector, but he left her on the way back right. from wherever she was. Oh, she, she was wanted her daughter to stay away from uh, what was her name, Yvette? Uh, uh, Yvette, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because she didn't want her daughter to Scene be influenced six. by that street walker. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. trying to keep her daughter from being uh, a prostitute right. or being raped or whatever, and just like she's trying to keep the son. She was very being... protective of her children. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. yeah. But, but back to when you were talking about whether she was greedy or not, I got the point that this was written in 1939 to mm -hmm. stop war, right? To stop yeah. the war that was coming. Right. Oh, do you think and he thought he could do that? No, but to speak out against it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He, he must have been you living know, in Germany when he wrote this. Yeah. That's and all I so can say. so I got yeah. it as... He was telling people, going to war isn't going to profit you. It's just going to destroy everything. And in this war, they say, Germany, half of the Germans were dead of war or, or the plague. The famine or the plague, which is, it, yeah, right. Right. I mean, that's pretty and, much what happened so in World War II. You're going too, to yeah. war, and you're saying this is wonderful. You're going to be brave, and you're going to be yeah. a soldier, and you're going to mm -hmm. fight. And Mother Courage is going to make money off of it. And, you know and survive and her family's going to be safe and that's not what's going to happen in war. Yeah. And well, anybody who's lived through war would have been able to yeah. say but that. Yeah. I, I also thought it was interesting that he made this play about a religious war mm -hmm. and all yes. the religious references. Ideology, yeah. You know, he, yeah. He says, uh, for example, he talks about Jesus and the loaves and fishes because Jesus fed the people and mm -hmm. he said to I left well you fed your soldiers right and but how did he feed his soldiers he killing, kill the killed, other people kill the people who own the ox <laughs> he, he also yeah. said that, that he didn't have to what what the leader was trying to do was to get them to fight a religious war so he wouldn't have to pay them that that's all they should be yeah, that's so one very, point. You know, I don't have to pay you. It's a religious war. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there, there was a line about that when uh, I lived said, hungry job cutting up peasants. Hungry job. We just got a few more minutes. <laughs> and, and, and kind of last question. What is Breck saying about, about what to do when the powerless face uh, against forces of power? And, and that, that's, that's what Dave Or forces getting. beyond their control. Beyond their control, which could be war in this case, but I think it goes beyond that to whatever. A hurricane or, 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 or a corrupt political system yeah. or, or whatever. Famine and, or, or yeah. all the things that are going on in our. I think he's saying ride the wave. Uh, not don't fight it because she survives and, and fights it, but don't become a, a partisan because that's not a key to survival. And anyone else? There's no way to win. That's what I thought. There's got no way to win. You're screwed. Yes. Well, I, I just thought he's saying, you know, she she does what she needs to survive, and that's pretty much what people do, I think, in those situations. Is they And there's not necessarily a right or wrong to her. I don't think she does anything wrong. I don't think she's a profiteer. I think she's earning yeah. enough to feed people. But, um, you know, I remember, I remember my dad was in World War II, and, and he said once that... Um, it wasn't when you were when you're there in your foxhole or when you're in battle. It's not about the ideology. It's not about the politicians. It's not about the glories of war. Survival. It's about surviving and, and making sure the guys with you are surviving and not letting them down. And that's what she was doing. She was not letting her kids down. 
So that's how I saw it. That's to me is a very simple story. And, and you know, he's like saying the ideology and the religion, you know, yeah. doesn't mean diddly to the people that are you know trying to survive. So. And he says the to, to the people at the bottom, a lot of times, a defeat. Is is just as good as a, a as a victory. Uh, yeah. I mean, he also has a, another. He, he said, someone said, war will just keep going because it gets to a lull. It'll be the the pope and the king and the and the, the leader of our country. They'll just step in and keep it going because mm. it's to, in their interest. <laughs> Certainly true, isn't it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah so. Name me a time in history where there hasn't been a war somewhere. You know. Yeah. Anybody else? And what what's he really saying about? about power and war and injustice and that we haven't set up to this point. I, there's a line someplace, I don't think it's in this book, but you, you learn nothing from war. <laughs> that was the line I remember. Well, here's yeah. the end of, end of scene six, uh, after his da her daughter gets attacked. She's not going to get any husband now. And uh, let's see, the soldier stuffed something in her mouth when she was little. As for Swiss cheese, I'll never see him again. Where I live is, God alone knows, war be damned. So she's not a fan of war, yeah. you know. In the end, yeah. <laughs> she can't wait for it to heat up. The yeah, well, yeah. It's th she... There were several parts of the book where she was discouraged when peace was going to. I thought she was, she was very greedy. How was she going to make <laughs> yeah. a living other than it That's wasn't like she could, you know? Disagreements, I think. Yeah, it wasn't like she could but sign she up to be a soldier. But she chose to make money off the war. She chose that to be her job. Maybe she, she could have see run another in. job. Yeah. I don't think she could see another way. And she was, she was a, again, single mother. Yeah little kids and you know. Here's a great line. I really like this one. Uh, Mother Courage says, God is merciful and men are bribable. That's how his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> yes. Corruption is our only hope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Here, here's the zingers in it's a good yeah. end to the yeah, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she really had some good lines. This yeah. would be a plum of oh, a Oh, it was role. a great read. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Great read. Yeah, a, a plum of a role for her, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but and a very the, difficult one. I oh think. my gosh! I mean, it would be like uh, Hamlet for a male actor, I would think. You know, I think it'd be harder, but that's uh, yeah, it, yeah, right. It, it, the thing is, the setting of this place. It's a, I have the play version. You know, it, oh. it is very, very sparse. Yeah. It, you know, it's not much on this on it's her on set. at and, all yeah. on the set at all. Some blasted right. trees in her cart, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they live in that cart, right? Yeah, I think yeah. They, they have no reference to a home yeah, other I, than the yeah. cart. I, I see them as refugees. Yeah. Well, I see them as the homeless the refugees. Time. Well, yeah. we bring it to the end. I think we all found it uh, interesting. So, thank you all. I think hope you enjoyed the show. We certainly enjoyed discussing it.